Peace Deep Minds 255 here. What up? What up? Today we got a Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth info dump. So I got some background that you can watch more podcast style because of so many quotes from the leading producers of Final Fantasy 7 Remake well Rebirth now. So I hope you enjoy it. What I did was I went across the four interviews. I'll put a link down to where those interviews come from, the article, and I could put it, uh, links to the actual articles themselves. But what I did for this video is I went through all four interviews and I picked out the quotes that stood out the most to me that I thought would be the most interesting. I can't say that I will make more videos on this unless one of these quotes really stick out to me to do a video of their own. A lot of them do. However, I just want to cover them briefly here to give you the broad perspective. There'll be plenty of other, uh, <laughs> I hope this doesn't sound bad, YouTubers will probably cover different parts of this in whole, but I just wanted to give more of a broad, like expose you to the information so you can get it all here. And then if there is something that does that you do want further analysis for, let me know and I'll put it down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, so our first quote comes from Mr. Katase, and he says, In Final Fantasy VII Re Remake, there are more opportunities for Zack to appear than in the original. So I wanted everyone who played Final Fantasy VII Remake to know more about the character Zack and dig deeper. So one thing to keep this to consider is I had to use Google to translate it from Japanese to English. But basically, the sum and substance of all this is that Zack is going to be playing more of a major role in Final Fantasy VII. And this allows the producers to give a reason to resell us Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII and make more money. Because truly, and we're going to get into this later, they talk about the story not being changed. But in the original Crisis Core, Zack died. And in Final Fantasy VII, Zack died. So even though they're going to say later the story is not going to change majorly, that doesn't make sense. And to my point, what you see right here is what I mean. This is a quote from Sato about Final Fantasy Crisis Core. Regarding the story, the original is faithfully reproduced. It will not be influenced by Final Fantasy Remake and will not be changed or new stories will be added. So, like I said, that doesn't make sense. Unless there's going to be timelines. Those weren't in the original either. So, no matter what, maybe they say ultimately the, the effect of the story won't be changed or the outcome of it, but ultimately there's a change there. So call it fact a fact the line. And to make my point further, here is the quote. Namora, it makes sense that it hasn't changed or if you change it, it doesn't make sense to use a different expression from the original in the Final Fantasy VII Remake project. The Final Fantasy VII Remake project is designed to solve the mystery of what it means when you do it to the end. I didn't make it that way with the intention of changing the past. So I haven't modified the story of Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Remake in the sense that history hasn't changed. The interviewer did for, for Gamer says, in other words, although the Final Fantasy VII Remake project may express differences from the original, there is no change to what happened before that. The moral, that's right. I think it's just a sense of incongruity or a question. Why is Zack and Midgar with Cloud on the trailer of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth the other day? If you play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you will understand a lot about it. I think that Nomura and crew are leaving this interpretive space so that they can twist the story how they want. I'm not really convinced that they've really made a decision as to who's going to die, if anybody at all. It seems like killing Zack 
Cloud, Sephiroth, or Ares. So Sephiroth will always come back. Can have a dramatic impact on fans. But the other thing that has to be considered is that I feel like they want some type of continued profit from this game. Which is why they keep making spinoffs and doing all these other things. So they're sticking with this theme that the past hasn't changed. Just like in a Rebirth trailer began, at least in the English one. What's in the past is in the past is done and it can't be redone, but we can still change the future. But this is conflicting, and as you can tell from here, they want it to be conflicting. Right? Like he's saying right there, why is there this lack of harmony with Zack being in the Rebirth trailer, but uh, we know he's supposed to be dead by playing Crisis Core. So they want that mystery to exist. They want that mystery to play a major role in the game. This next quote that you see from Katashi on the screen is in response to why Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is on PlayStation 5 mainly. Mr. Katase says, of course, the quality of graphics is also the same, but there is also the speed of access to SSD. If you've done the original version, you can imagine it to some extent. But from now on, the story will proceed in the vast world after escaping Midgar. Of course, even in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we will draw a world that expands from here onward. So the part of loading stress becomes a big bottleneck in that respect. In order to clear that point and play the world comfortably, I felt that PS5 specs were still necessary. The other part of the quote that you don't see there is that um, Sony is paying them a huge amount to keep it as exclusive as possible because obviously there are plenty of PCs that can produce the power of a PlayStation 5. I hope this play on the word vast and this expansive word, uh, world is really expansive. Final Fantasy 16 is not open world because they feel like it can't show how vast it is. So maybe they're going to take that same ideology with Final Fantasy 7. This next quote, the more explains more about the relationship between Zack and Sephiroth and Crisis Core. Crisis Core of Final Fantasy VII was the only work laid to Final Fantasy VII that was very attractive because you can see the human-like Sephiroth. Is there anything in Crisis Core of Final Fantasy VII that you were aware of regarding the relationship between Zack and Sephiroth? Nomura, in Crisis Core of Final Fantasy VII, Sephiroth, who was a very good hero, appears. But Sephiroth and Zack are treated as reliable seniors rather than treating Sephiroth like a hero because of Zack's personality. It's a feeling. No matter how great Sephiroth is, the existence of Zack, who dares to come in contact with him, is very fresh for Sephiroth. And Sephiroth does not have an unpleasant face to Zack, who comes in contact with him like that. I wonder if I could understand the relationship between the two people and who they are. I think there are times when you can see that Sephiroth trusts Zack. When I heard about this dynamic between Sephiroth and Zack and the idea of Zack presenting himself as an equal to Sephiroth, I really liked that and it got me interested. So maybe that's something else to explore in Rebirth, more of how Zack's personality interacts with Sephiroth after the fact. The interviewer then asked Katase a really good question. Basically, this work will be released between Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Is there any point you would like us to pay attention to in connection with the remake project? Katase, it was the day before Final Fantasy VII, and I would like you to pay attention to the fact that Zack Sephiroth and Ares are active. And as anyone who has cleared Final Fantasy VII Remake will know, there are parts that match and pass each other between Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII R and Final Fantasy VII Remake. I hope that the mystery around here will lead to your interest in the next work, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So again, they're doubling down on the fact that, yes, we want you to wonder and speculate and try to figure out why Zack is alive. And not to toot my own horn, the video card is right there. I had said in prior video 
that Zack being alive was the high point of the ending and the, one of the most interesting parts about Final Fantasy 7. He says that he wants us to pay attention to the fact that not only Zack is alive, but Zack, Sephiroth, and Ares. So Sephiroth and Ares also play some role into this mystery of what's going on with Zack. So on this next quote, Morris asks about the open world. The more, this time it was just a teaser trailer to announce the title. So there was little information. I wonder if it will be the next time that you can see surprising information. So I'll confirm there's going to be another trailer. At first glance, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth looked like an open world. No more. Isn't that information next time? Is it okay to think that the overall system is inheriting the previous work, Final Fantasy VII Remake? No more. That's right. Since the base was made in the first work, Final Fantasy VII Remake, the rough system is followed and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to no one's surprise. I added to no one's surprise. When I finished playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was wondering how long the next work would be released, but it was nice surprise that such a large scale title would appear in about three years. So he kind of leaves that question open. I don't know if that's to, but if Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is open world, <laughs> uh, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. And Final Fantasy VII has enough towns, cities, monsters, and things they can add besides so that the land of Gaia can play a great role in an open world. The next two quotes from Nomura and Katasi are really important as they confirm two important things for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Red X will also be a playable character, so expectations are high. Nomura, please look forward to it. Along with the announcement, uh, this is the interviewer again, along with the announcement of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it was also revealed that the remake project was completed in three parts. In that case, how far is the range drawn in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in the original? I'm very curious. Katase, I can't give you a specific scope, but there is no lack of major events in the original version throughout. However, in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the locations that appeared in the original version are not always visited in exactly the same order. Some locations have changed order. Now, to give you an example of that, I was listening to the Night Sky Prince's video on this. I'll put the link in the description at some point if I have it, but just type in Night Sky Prince Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and you'll see his video. But for example, when Cloud and crew leave Midgar, Calm is not the first place they stop at. And for me, that's a major no-no. To a certain extent, I'm obviously going to play the game, but Calm is an absolute iconic legendary moment in Final Fantasy 7. It's where the story twists from fighting Shinra to focusing on Sephiroth and it's Sephiroth's introduction. I can see them doing a good job building up to that. Maybe Zack joins the party before then. That could be exciting. But I'm going to say that's a major bold step in terms of changing the story. As the nice guy Prince himself said, it'll be interesting to see how those things play out. All right. This next quote from Nomura is their way of getting even OG Final Fantasy VII plan fans to buy Ever Crisis. At the end of the trailer, the interviewer asks, You can see a person who looks like Sephiroth with short hair. Nomura, that is Sephiroth. It will be the first appearance of Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, which has not appeared in other Final Fantasy VII related works. If you look closely, the sword is also unusual. And that is Sephiroth before you met Massimoon. I think maybe translation here probably just saying that is Sephiroth before you have the Massimoon blade. Or maybe Massimoon might be something larger, I don't know. So like I said, this is, I feel like, 
this is their way of sucking us original fans in. All any Sephiroth fan, which most Final Fantasy VII fans are, uh, is gonna want to know about Sephiroth's back path. So under a situation where we would normally not pay attention to a phone game, I think most of us, I can't speak for everybody, but most of us are probably not interested in Final Fantasy VII, the phone game. So what do we do? We're going to put some extra content in there that doesn't appear in any other Final Fantasy VII work. And it's going to be something as important as Sephiroth's background. They made this mistake with Final Fantasy XV. And we see where that led them, although it did sell well. And I love Final Fantasy XV. It's another separate video, but I think it's a missed chance for a rebirth. Because Sephiroth, something as important as Sephiroth's background should be explored more. Maybe Ever Crisis will lightly touch on it. But that's some, that, that type of important information really needs to be in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And it, it should rightfully belong there. Alright, this next quote from Nomura basically tells us what type of content is acceptable in the world of Final Fantasy Rebirth. The answer is basically all of it. Nomura. Staff said they would like to remaster Dirge of Cerebus Final Fantasy 7 and tried to calculate the cost of before Crisis Final Fantasy 7, but there are no plans so far. The appearance of Weiss, Weiss and Nero in Final Fantasy 7 Remake Integrate also means that it is a common world where all the titles related to Final Fantasy 7 are connected and it was a choice from the perspective of being a strong enemy suitable as a boss. So that definitely includes Advent Children, Ever Crisis, Crisis Core. So there's a lot of things they can add to this game. And honestly, if those titles kind of become side content, but not major side content in a way, however they choose to do it, that's fine. Anything but that Ghost Train stuff. But this... This says that the story can be enhanced a lot. I particularly will love to see Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. <clears throat> Excuse me. I particularly would love to see Final Fantasy VII Advent Children added into the story. I love that movie. And if it's added into Rebirth or Final Fantasy, whatever the next R is going to be, that would be great. Okay, this next quote's another question about young short hair Sephiroth's appearance. Interviewer, I see now. I would like to ask about Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. At the end of the trailer, you can see a person like Sephiroth with short hair. But that is Sephiroth in his youth, right? Nomura, that's right. Since it also includes the world of Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier currently being distributed, it will be drawn as an episode of the first soldier. When the episode that Sephiroth comes to be called, a hero is drawn. I just hate, again, that such important content is being placed in a game that the main fans don't care for in an attempt to get us to play it. And that's all I gotta say about that. So the Google Translate calls it Reverse, but it's Rebirth. And about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, because the scene where Cloud and Sephiroth are walking the past recollection seen by Cloud. No more, yes. Due to information restrictions, some of the displays have been turned off, but I'm afraid that it's a new scene, so I like to mention it. He laughs. I think this next thing is a quote from Katase. I think the mountains in the distant view were characteristic, but I hope you can remember the original. So this quote suggests that what Com saw that what Cloud saw in the Rebirth trailer was calm. Interviewer, although it was also in the original, can the two fight together as a party in the flashback scene? Nomura, please wait for the follow-up report. He didn't say no. Interviewer, looking at the distance to the destination at the top of the screen, the field seemed to be quite wide. Nomura, I can't say much yet, but it's wide. Katase, it would be nice if you could imagine the original work there as well. After leaving Midgar, I felt like, come on, 
Interviewer, there is a feeling of openness that spreads the vast world and a feeling of excitement that the journey is about to begin. In the trailer, there will be a scene where Zach, who carries cloud on his shoulder, came to the suburbs of Midgar. Again, the hinting at the open world, and hinting at us being able to fight with Sephiroth on our team, just like in the original, maybe even controller, but the hush hush on that, they're not saying anything about that for obvious reasons, but they didn't flat out say no, and that's important. And finally, this quote from Nomura, and I'll, you can pause it if you want to read the whole quote, because this simply suggests that Again, that none of the contents that was in the original game are going to be missing. For the time being, there was no plan to have more than a trilogy. Since Final Fantasy VII Remake was up to Midgar, it is difficult to incorporate the contents of the original in the remaining two parts. Maybe something will be omitted. You may be worried, but please be assured about the value as it will not be a digest. And I guess this way of saying it won't miss anything. Right, Deep Minds. Well, what are your thoughts about this information? Uh, I hope you're hyped. I hope you're enjoying it. Me personally, right now, maybe I'll post some of this content. I'm definitely gonna make it to content. I am replaying both Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII Remake from scratch prior to Crisis Core because I love the game. But tell me, Deep Minds, what are your thoughts? What are you most looking forward to? Uh, do you want to play Final Fantasy VII on? Uh, Got your gadget, cell phones, are you looking forward to Crisis Core? Are you just gonna buy Final Fantasy Rebirth and watch all the other content online? I'll leave your comments and thoughts below. Thank you for hanging out with us to the end. This is DeepMind255 out.